Um, so we'll start with our first question. It's going to be kind of a collective question for everyone. Now, now is this, are you kind of like, um, 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 uh, uh, what's the uh, Jeopardy guy? What's the guy? Alex Trebek. Trebek. Alex, Trebek. <laughs> Alex Trebek. Are we supposed to like buzz in if we can't yeah. answer? <laughs> well, on, on this one, it's going to be more of a collective okay. 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 thing. Big um, political debate. And, <laughs> uh, we want to know what is geography? <laughs> now, just, you know, that simple question. For me, it's, um, it's quite broad ranging, but it's, uh, at its core, it's the study of place, space, landscape, um, and the physical and human processes, the drawings of making, and uh, creating an understanding of those things. <laughs> I have a good definition um, from the Russian uh, school of thought. Geopica studies the surface of the Earth and everything on it. Geography is what geographers do. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it is both our blessing and our curse. I mean, we, because we cover uh, areas of uh, the physical planet, um, we cover areas of human society, we're incredibly broad-based, which, which means we sometimes appear to like do, do everything but do nothing. Uh, but the focus is not, again, it's not on what we study, it's, on, it's the approach, that it's the spatial approach um, and therefore, anything that has a spatial component to it um, is, is fair game for study and research by geographers. I think part of the problem has always been uh, just what, what you've asked, what is geography? And uh, it, you'd think it would be a relatively easy thing to define and talk about, especially with students, until you actually start to define it. And uh, I mean, every textbook that you run across probably had this, uh, probably has a different definition of it. You know, mine has always been, you know, the study of the earth is the home of humans. Uh, you know, and if you say that, it's like, oh, what's that mean for Pete's sake? And I think because it is so broad based, uh, it, it is hard to define. And I think as a discipline, uh, perhaps, we have not done as good a job as we probably could have over the years of trying to explain what, what exactly geography is. Because if you did, you wouldn't have to do it all. Most people have an idea of what a geologist or a sociologist or a biologist does until you ask them, well, you know, what's a geographer do? Well, you know, you get that blank stare from people, well, don't you know where every place in the world is? I remember uh, standing outside, my dad was also a geography professor, and standing outside uh, his office once as I had come back to visit uh, for homecoming, uh, you know, uh, students were coming through with their parents and so forth. One uh, girl came through with her mother, and she said, "Well, this is uh, where I take my geography class." And she said, "Mom said geography." I says, "Well, I didn't know they taught geography in college." And she says, "Oh yeah, she could even get a degree in it." And the woman was even more dumbfounded. <laughs> well, don't they know where all the places in the world are? And you know, I, I thought at that point, you know, uh, you know, this whole idea, this sort of this problem definition and communication and so forth. That to an extent exists today as well. Um, it's a very difficult thing to try to pin down, and I think as indicated because it is such so wide ranging. So that helps. It. We have um, the answer key for oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, according to the SESU website, or the geography uh, website up there. Um, we uh, change it a little bit, but this is what the website says. We did or you can go on the website. Um, right now, I want to turn it over to Gareth, and he's going to be um, talking about the different majors that are offered. Well, we can all do this program, program actually, yeah. <coughs> uh, because there are, um, well, there's the major option or the, the minor option. You can see uh, what courses are required. Um, you got this from the website. <coughs> this is from the website. Because there's an error. There's an error that's been introduced. <laughs> Well, do you want to talk to that thing? Um, the error is in, and this is one of the, you know, uh, it's in the GIS minor. Um, it's a 24 credit minor. There is no course 317 anymore. Um, and 216 is now uh, included in the list there. That's the only difference. But that's a problem of, we don't control that particular component of the website. And uh, it should have been, I'm glad we caught that. Uh, somebody, somebody emailed me on the minor. Okay. 
So you can see um, we have the JARC major, we have JARC minor, GIS minor. Um, and you can actually do the GIS minor with the geography major as a standard. Yeah. So these aren't uh, mutually exclusive. But if you want to go back, I'd like to make mention of one other thing, because some students have talked about this. Um, notice that uh, if you do the GIS minor, you can uh, double count up to nine credits of upper division courses that you take in the GIS minor towards the 18 credits of upper division for the major. Most students don't, uh, and here's the reason why, um, given the math uh, of things, is that uh, some of you are aware that the university has a requirement that you must have 45 credits of upper division courses, three and 400 level courses. For most students, if they were to double count nine credits of the GIS minor towards the geography major, you would be nine credits short of the 45 credits of upper division that you need. But we keep that in there for the, you know, we'll have an occasional student say, who have been a meteorology major or a geology major or you know, some other major, they've got some upper division credits in another discipline, and to help them speed them up in terms of graduation and not delay them, we allow that double counting. But as I said, relatively few students take advantage of that because um, it, doesn't, it doesn't work to their advantage. But if you're one of those students, uh, be aware of that, that that might work to your advantage. We all know what GIS is, right? Geographic Information Systems or Science. Computer mapping would be the way to describe it. It's a huge growth area. And one of the things that uh, there is a lack of, I think sometimes the public understanding of what geography is, but employers are learning very quickly the value of geography, particularly through these kinds of techniques. Uh, GIS being uh, a huge growth area, uh, one of the biggest uh, in terms of uh, the country as a whole, in terms of areas of employment growth. Uh, and uh, it's, it's very lucrative. So it's, it's something that uh, we have a lot of expertise. I don't actually have expertise in GIS, but uh, I think uh, most of us on this panel do, and, um, which, is, which is rare for a Department of Geography to have so much GIS expertise and knowledge. Uh, and, and so you have the ability of being trained in geography, but also applying, applying it through this fantastic skill set. Um, and that's one of the strengths of this. sector as well as the private sector, especially GIX. Um, so you could work for local or state government. Um, there are federal jobs as well um, in, these, in these areas. It's, it's not something that this is just one company. Uh, it's a whole industry that, that, that's being listed here in, in these areas. You know, we'll probably jump into a lot of these. So um, give you a couple of as department chair, I um, get notified when people contribute money uh, to the department. So I just uh, opened up a check today um, from someone who was contributing to the Ruben Parsons Scholarship Fund. Uh, this is somebody that lives up in uh, the northern part of the state and works for a solid waste um, management company uh, in the Duluth area. So that's an it's an environmental example yeah. as well. Um, in the fall, I got a check from someone who uh, works for UPAL. Uh, does locational analysis to determine where is it appropriate for um, new franchises uh, for U-Haul um, to open up in terms of where the, where the demand for people moving is. And those are, we could go all that others do more, but those are just a couple of quick, um, you know, uh, off the top of my head, ones that I remember are very specific um, jobs that people have that you have in U-Haul. Yeah, U-Haul. I remember when I graduated in 70, uh, things obviously were a little bit different then. But we see up here some of these names were even being bandied about at that time. But uh, quite frankly, your job opportunities were somewhat much more narrower, shall we say, than we see today. You certainly uh, had the opportunity to go into teaching, which would require obviously an advanced degree. Um, 
used to be able to get a pretty good job with just a master's degree, and, and uh, today, of course, you need that doctorate. So it does require uh, a certain amount, uh, obviously, graduate work beyond your beyond the undergraduate. But that was one, you know, main career track. You didn't really have much choice. Uh, the other thing at the time was planning, and uh, uh, planning was big, uh, especially regional planning at the time. And there were a number of job opportunities in regional planning commissions, uh, as I remember it. Um, as far as the techniques go, uh, GIS wasn't even on the radar then, even though it was being developed uh, as a tool, uh, as it began in the 60s, it really wasn't a career option at the time. There were no courses, basically, in GIS. And what we call GIS today, um, well, even the computer components of it really were place. So it was basically cartography and at that point uh, the jobs in cartography were either at state agencies like uh, departments of transportation, uh, these regional planning commissions that I talked about because everything was hand drawn at that time, uh, and of course the federal government. And the big employer at the time was uh, what was used to be called the old ACIC, Air Aeronautical Chart Information Service. Uh, and. Um, Center and uh, which later morphed into defense mapping, and uh, that was uh, basically in St. Louis, uh, D.C., and the like. Uh, those basically were your, your career opportunities. If you did any kind of thing in air photo interpretation, uh, you know, that was probably again in the government sector, uh, that type of thing, or you went into some aspect of program. Today, of course, as we've seen, uh, with the development of GIS, which I kind of describe as this black hole, which is sucking in all those old disciplines that used to be separate. I mean, you were a cartographer, you were a photo interpreter, you were in CAD, or you were a surveyor, or something like that. Today, uh, you can't tell the difference. It's sort of morphed into this GIS science, GIS science yeah. component as, as we see. So when you look at job descriptions today, where it used to say, you know, cartographer wanted photo interpretation specialist wanted, you don't see that anymore, basically. You see a GIS researcher, GIS technician, and it's sort of expected that you have these computer mapping skills, that you have these image interpretation skills, uh, not only analog, but digital, certainly as well. And uh, even uh, in the surveying community, uh, I think a lot of surveyors are finding this is not a surveying job that you get, it's surveying with all of this other kind of experience. Uh, certainly an expertise. What GIS has done, I think, is really, as uh, Gareth and others have indicated, broaden the scope of, uh, of, of what your job opportunities and capabilities uh, certainly could be. Uh, not only in those traditional areas where you would expect to find it at uh, state and, and federal agencies, uh, whether it's, again, the CIA, perhaps, uh, events mapping, those things, which still are opportunities that exist, especially in this era of uh, homeland security and, and the like. But also, uh, students who are getting jobs in places that you wouldn't have thought of before, because you have these spatial analytical tools. Uh, David mentioned the uh, fellow I know, who's a former student, uh, who's working for, uh, for u Hall. Uh, we also have had students uh, that uh, uh, in our master's program that worked to work for McDonald's. Most of them doing route management, uh, we also have some people at UPS, uh, route management and deliveries, uh, uh, retail trade location. You know, you just don't plop a 7 Eleven store down someplace and gee, I hope it goes. Uh, you do some research with that, and it's all spatial, and it's all a lot of it done through the analytical capabilities of geographic information systems. We've seen a lot of students with their surveying skills, again, working for engineering companies environmental engineering, where you're expected to go out and do you know, some GPS work and bring it back in, put it into databases and manage those and so forth. So um, you have a lot of these cap capabilities now. We haven't mentioned the economy, and perhaps we shouldn't, but uh, the, the job opportunities are there. You just have to search for them maybe a little bit harder. And you have to sell yourself with these skills. But uh, geography, I think, today gives you the kind of flexibility that uh, really other disciplines don't. 